Okay, very honored to introduce tonight the beginning of our summer program of Iyun Hadaf to understand the depth and the mahalach and learning and how we can apply this kind of mahalach approach to learning analysis of the Gemara to any Gemara. Yet Hashem over the summer, over the next eight weeks, we're going to be able to enhance our learning skills in a very effective way to grow in analysis of the Shaklevatarya, the back and forth of the Gemara, how the Gemara is structured and the depth of the Gemara and how to apply that kind of mahalach, that kind of learning analysis to any Gemara and exponentially increase our skills. Rabbi Asen Englander is the Rosh Masifta of Yeshiva Torah's Chaim. He's been a master educator all over the world, uh, a good friend of mine, Talmud Chacham, and a person to get to know. We need to get to know Rabbi Englander and for his hadracha, for his wisdom, for his insight, and for his unique mahalach in Gemara that he has developed over the past 30 years, this unique approach to learning Gemara, which is going to open our eyes with Chidush Torah that we are going to appreciate and live in for many years to come. Yes, Hashem, Rabbi Englander Amaseches Brachos Perek Dalet. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, I don't want to uh, spend a lot of time getting uh, with all the introductions, so I want to get to it very quickly. So I just want to quickly just familiarize yourself, you, you, with these two pieces of uh, materials here in front of you. So if, I, if everyone would just quickly take a look at the white, white cover, which is known as the formatted Gemara. The formatted Gemara is a, uh, I discovered a, as, as I was teaching Gemara, I found out that a lot of people get the eebie-jeebies about Gemara because it's, it's uh, one long run-on sentence and it looks, uh, looks very foreboding and it's in Aramaic and, and ah! So uh, I, I've learned over the years that if you break it down and you color code it and you break it down into pieces, it makes it a lot easier to, to digest. And that is what the formatted Gemara is. You can write in it, you can write on it, whatever it is, it's yours. The other, which is the blue, that is the workbook. Now the workbook has all sorts of stuff in it, which will help us. And every little sugulit, I, you'll notice that there's sugu 1.1 1 .1 and 1 1.2, uh, that, that is just an Englander thing. <laughs> That's just to further break it down and make it that we master one little piece at a time in order not to, not to get us too spread thin. We want to focus and, and master one piece at a time. That's our goal. If you look in the first page of your, introduc of your, of your uh, booklet here, in the, uh, the workbook, you will see I'm on page one, so you 1.1. There's an introduction, there's a word list, and then there's an outline in English and various exercises that come after that. Okay, the goal of that is to master each piece. The ultimate goal is to read it inside of a regular Gemara and to know it without any outside help. The same Gemaras that you used in your yeshivas, the same Gemaras that the, uh, you know, the, the, the big old rabbis with the bite, long white beards use, right? The, <laughs> that's, that's the ones that you're going to primarily get to, but this is just a manner of getting to it. It's like sort of a shortcut. You can use it to your whatever it is that works for you. If you find that the formatted Gemara is unnecessary, great. Uh, if you find whatever works for you, it sh you should go for it. Okay. Now, ultimately what I want to do is, like I said, I want to make sure that everybody is reading inside the Gemara, inside the format, not the format of Gemara. This is just the, the way to get there. I want to get into the Vilna Gemara, uh, but I want to do it one piece at a time. It's important for, for mastering. That's the main, main thing. We want to learn it over until it's, until it's absolutely clear. Okay, that having been said, I'm going to do something a little funny. I'm not going to start class. Uh, I, what I want you to do is simply get together with the guy who's sitting right next to you and using 
read the introduction and using the word list, which is broken down. If you look, there's a, there's a space in between lines. So the word list is corresponding to the lines in the formatted Gemara. I want you to do the following. Sit down, work out with your Chavrusa, and just try to work out Sugya 1.1, which is the first mission in the fourth parak of Brachas, and just try your, try, uh, try your luck at it. Just see how it goes. I will tell you that the Mishnah is, being dis- is discussing the times for davening, something that we're familiar with, but now you'll find out the rest of the story. Great, so great, great, terrific. How are we doing over here? We're doing good.
Great, good Valdek. How are we doing? Good. Great. Good to see you. First step is make sure you got the translation straight. Okay, make sure you translate every word accurately. Otherwise, if you are not translating accurately, you will not understand the Gemara. Second, after you got all the translation down, put it into a normal, understandable sentence that makes sense to you. I often tell, tell my students, don't make believe that you are telling this Gemara over to your kid sister who never learned this Gemara before. If you can make it that you can, if you understand it well enough to explain it to her, you got it. If you can't, go back. You don't, you, you don't have it down. Okay? And the, the third thing is, after you do that, make sure you put the whole thing together and you're following the the step-by-step -step of the Gemara and how the Gemara flows. Everybody is also familiar, I'm assuming, that these are proportional hours. Proportional hours means that they are, it's not a 60-minute hour necessarily, it is a twelfth of the day. So this is starting from here, the beginning of the day, going to twelve, that's the end of the day. Correct? For the record, there is a machlokas, a big machlokas between the Gon, the Vilna Gon, and the Mogan Avram. You be, what is the beginning and what is the end? Now you may have heard somewhere along the line that there is like two different Zman Kriyashmas. Did you ever hear about that? Right? There's the Vilna Gon Zman and the Mogan Avram Zman. Did you ever hear about such things? Okay. If that's familiar, this is where it's from. So I'll briefly tell you that according to the Mogan Avram, the day starts at Alos HaShachar, at dawn, which is questionable exactly how to read that. Uh, let's call it, just for simplicity's sake, we'll call it 72 minutes before sunrise, although that's not necessarily true. Okay? 72 minutes before sunrise, it starts here, and it ends, according to the Mogan Avram, at Seis HaKochavim. And we're going to also, for simplicity's sake, call that 72 minutes after sunset. Okay? Good? Got it? Now, according to the Vilna Gon, that's not true. You start the day, this chart starts at sunrise and ends at sunset. Okay? So, according to the Mogan Avram, the day starts 72 minutes earlier and ends 72 minutes later. Good? And according to the Vilna Gon, it's longer, it's shorter days, shorter hours. Good? Clear? Help me out. I need your help. Just blurt out the answer. Tzulos Shakar means what? Shakras. Ad Chatzos means until midday. When's midday? Six hours, beginning or end of six hours? Good, correct. So that means here. Chachamim 
according to the Tanakama, the first opinion, you have from here all the way through there, right? To Davin, correct? This is number one, Shacharis. So, Tanakama. First opinion, I'm going to abbreviate that tough kuf, Tanakama. First opinion is until Chatzos, midday. Good. Next, Rabbi Yehuda Omer, Rabbi Yehuda says, Ad Arba Shos. What does that mean? Until, until four hours. I'm being careful here. Until four hours, right? It doesn't say until the fourth hour. It says until four hours, right? So here's the second opinion. So this would be the, the, uh, Arguing opinion, right? So this is going to be, this is A, this is B. So Rabbi Yehuda, he says, until four hours. Correct? Now, let me ask you a question. Where on my chart? I start here, right? Where do I stop? Here? Until, until the end of the fourth hour, or the beginning of the fourth hour? Um, and beginning? Both. both. Okay, and actually I'm cheating. It, I'm cheating because it happens to be a question in the Gemara. The Gemara asks the question. That's the reason why it was specific, because it says four hours. So does that mean to the beginning of the fourth hour or the end of the fourth hour, right? Huh? Oh, okay, so Gemara's conclusion is the end of the fourth hour. But I wouldn't know that from the Mishnah. I only know it from the Gemara, right? So therefore, it's going to come out the end of the fourth hour. Okay, good? So really what we're seeing here is that we have a machlokus between the first opinion, who we'll call either the Tanakama or the Rabbonan, whether you have the whole morning until midday or whether you have only until... The end of four hours, and that which I say the end of four hours is really only because that I know that from the Gemara, otherwise I wouldn't have known that, right? Otherwise, from the Mishnah, you don't necessarily know that it's the end of four hours. It could be the beginning of four hours. Good? Follow? Okay. That was easy enough. That's Shacharis. Okay? By the way, how do we Paskin? How would you say to Paskin? So, so if, you say, if you say four hours, I know that if you think that it's the beginning of four hours, you say, well, what would it mean if they say until one hour? You wouldn't say that means no time. You'd say it means one four hours. <coughs> okay, good. Okay, I understand you. The, the thing that's tricky about talking in this language is because that we're you're not used to it, but we, hour number one is a span of time. Hour number two is a span of time, right? So, therefore, when we say until four hours, that means... You go through, if you, you start at what would be zero, but it's really the beginning of the first hour, say, right? Right. right. You wouldn't say zero time. Well, you would say, you would, would say, uh, okay, I understand, but you could, you because if you, yeah, I, 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 I understand where you're coming from. How do you know? <laughs> uh, how do you know? Oh, uh, okay, you just happen to know that. Check, you can check in the, in the Mishnah, in the Mishnah, you can probably see the little uh, numbers. Oh, uh, okay, so you know that trick. Okay, very good, uh, very good, okay. Now, if, if you would ask me, I don't know if you are asking me, but if you would, I would have said, how do we paskin, if I had to guess? Oh, exactly, I would say like the Tanakama. Why? Because they are the... Majority opinion, the Rabbim, exactly, right? What Jeremy said, right? Exactly. The Rabbim. Because whenever in a Mishnah that you have that the first opinion is said generically, like it is here, right? The Shachar is until Chatzos. And Rabbi Yehuda says until four hours. So the implication is that the majority opinion holds until... 
until Chatzos. And it's just Rabbi Yehuda, who is the singular opinion, he holds until four hours. Now, who should you ordinarily paskin like? You should ordinarily paskin like the? The Rabbim, right? The majority opinion, correct? That's the way we always do it, right? Okay. Again, I cheated. The Gemara is going to be discussing this very point. Later on, there's a lot of loose ends in our Mishnayis. Mishnah is meant to be terse, very quick, and just say, and then the Gemara, it comes to analyze and, 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 and fill in a lot of the blanks. So these are a couple of the blanks that we need to find out. Who do we paskin like? Makes a big difference. Okay, let's go on. Tfilas HaMincha. Let's go, what's that? That's pretty obvious. Mincha time. Ad HaErev, what does that mean? Till evening. What's evening? Oh, so the simple understanding is that it goes all the way until 12. So Mincha now will go... Now, it's not going to start at 1 because Mincha is the afternoon. So I'm going to start it at Chatzos, even though that it's not so simple that it starts there. The Mishnah only discusses end time. It doesn't discuss beginning time. But I'm going to start it at Chatzos, and I'm going to go like this. Till the end. Okay? That's Rabbonan. All the way to 12. Good? Okay? So the next entry on our chart would be 2. Mincha. Okay, first opinion, A, Tanakama, until evening. Okay, correct? Till evening, which we'll call, according to the Vilna Gaon, sunset. Well, that's what we'll call it for right now. It isn't so simple, but that's what we'll call it. Next. Rabbi Yehuda Omer, again, Rabbi Yehuda disagrees, and he says until Plag HaMincha. What's Plag HaMincha? Anybody? Good. Saf and Mincha Katana. So in short, Mincha Katana starts at nine and a half hours into the day. That's tricky. That means halfway through the tenth hour, because that's Gemara talk. Nine and a half means halfway into the tenth hour. So Mincha Ketana starts here. Okay? This is Mincha Ketana. Right there. Okay? Got it? And Plaga Mincha is halfway through that. So if you are mathematically inclined, you will figure out that this is two and a half hours, nine and a half till 12. Halfway is going to be one and a quarter hours, good. And therefore, from nine and a half, it's gonna go to 10 and three quarters, correct? So Plag HaMincha is gonna be right here. Let's get a different color. That way we can have a real nice colorful thing. So 10 and 3 quarter hours is going to be right here. Okay? And this is going to be Plag HaMincha. Okay? 10 and 3 quarter hours. So, let's go. According to Rabbi Yehuda, when can you Daven Mincha from... Okay, we don't have any reason to assume that they argue on the beginning time. So let's call it Chatzos, even though that's not so simple. And it goes until? Yeah. Okay, Plag HaMincha, correct. So according to Rabbi Yehuda, it goes until here. Good? Clear? Yes? So far so good? Okay. So here's the second. Here's Rabbi Yehuda. B, this is Reb Yehuda, until Plag HaMincha, which we will call 10 and 3 quarter hours. Okay. How do we pass it on that one? 
Anybody? That one's not so simple, huh? Uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Very good. That's, that's, that's also not so simple. And again, I cheated. I happen to know the upcoming Gemara, so uh, I have an advantage. Okay, we'll leave that. But that's also somewhat questionable, right? Again, we would presume that we would Paskin like Tanakama. That's the assumption, right? Because that makes most sense, right? We go with the majority of you, right? Next. Tfilas Erev, Ein La Keva. Help me out. What does that mean? Oh, okay. Okay, that sounds good, right? It's okay. Ma'ariv. Ein la keva. What is, translate that. What does ein la keva mean? No set time. No set time. Does that mean you can daven it at four, uh, four o'clock in the afternoon? Nine a.m.? No. What it means is? Oh, okay. All night long. All night. Oh, we'll talk about that. Very good. Very good. That's a very good... Well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> Everything has a source in the Gemara. You'll see. You'll, when, when we go through this sugya in Mir Tashem, you'll see where this all comes from. You'll find out. But that's a good point. Now, there's an obvious question on the Mishnah, which actually the Gemara is going to ask, which is... Ah, oh, exactly. Very good. Why does it say, Ein la keva has no set time? That's a funny way of putting it. You should really say, exactly in the same terminology that we've been talking until now. Until such and such, right? So you should say, until, I don't know, morning. Right? Until sunrise, or something like that, right? Or until dawn, or whatever, right? But Ein la keva has no set time. That's a funny way of saying it. And it's, I'm sorry? How did you know that? Oh, that's very good. Very good. The Gemara, the Gemara actually is going to say exactly what you just said. Exactly. Very good. That's amazing. I don't know how you knew that, but the Gemara is actually going to say exactly that. The Gemara says that the reason... The reason why the Mishnah uses that terminology is to show you that Marv is optional. But very good, but we're going to hold on that. You're ahead of me. Okay. The Gemara picks up on all of these points because the Gemara is out to analyze the Mishnah and you would be amazed at how thoroughly the Mishnah is analyzed in the Gemara. The Gemara does not miss much. Right? <laughs> the Gemara right, attacks... Everything in the Mishnah, like, hmm, why did you say this? And why did you use that? And why is this? Because that's what the Gemara is out to do, to analyze the Mishnah and get every down, every point down. Okay, let's go on. Next, Vishal Musafim Kol Hayom. What's the next entry? Help me out. What is Shal Musafim Kol Hayom? Okay, so for Musaf. All day. Kol Hayom. So that sounds like Musaf goes all the way from one, all the way until 12, right? That's Musaf. Is that right? That's what it says. It sounds like. Rabbi Yehud Omer, Ad Sheva So Rabbi Yehuda says what? Until beginning or end? Uh, you're figuring out that it's probably the end because Englander said that when it said four hours, it meant the end of four hours. So you're assuming it's the same thing, right? That's a good assumption. Okay? It's a good assumption. It's not necessarily true, but it's a good assumption. Okay. Again, the Gemara is going to pick on this. So let's go with Rabbi Yehuda. So Rabbi Yehuda is going to say what? Going to go from Musaf until the end of seven hours. 
Okay? Good? Well, okay, on a perfect day, on June 21st, right? We just passed it. June 21st, where it would be a perfect day, 12 hours each, right? Equinox. So then, then it would be, yes, at 1 p.m. But that doesn't happen more than twice a year. <laughs> okay, good. By the way, in case you are looking at the chart well, you will notice that there is a little of an overlap between... Ah, oh, Musaf and Mincha, that's right. There is a brief, ah, oh, that's right. There is a brief overlap between the time that you can dive in Mincha and the time you can dive in Mariv. Excuse me, I said that wrong. From the time you dive in Mincha and the time you dive in Musaf, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Right? According to the Tanakama, there's a big overlap, right? Right. Okay? Assuming that's the end even though the Gemara is going to be discussing that. Okay? Good? Got it? There is a theoretical possibility that, assuming that seven hours means the end of seven hours, uh, rather than the beginning, there is a theoretical overlap, and there theoretically could be a time in which you could... Davin Mincha and Musaf. It's, it's Rosh Chodesh, and you didn't get a chance to Davin Musaf before, and you could theoretically be at a, at, a, at a small window of time where you might have an ability to Davin Mincha and Musaf together at the same time, according to Rabbi Yehuda. No. They, you, you, well, we'll have to discuss that. Okay, but yes, um, in Karbonos, the last carbon of the day, generally speaking, with the exception of Erev Pesach, the last carbon of the day is the daily Tumid, which is the afternoon sacrifice, daily sacrifice, which is the corresponding carbon to Mincha, to our, to our uh, Davni Mincha. So, yeah, ordinarily we would say Musaf always comes first. I'm just saying that there is an overlap there. Okay, got it? Everybody with me? Good? So far, so good? We have the four basic tefillahs, right? And we've got them all down. And with the exception of Mariv, we have every three out of four, there's a machlokas about, right? <laughs> right? According to Shachris, Tanakama says until midday, where Rabbi Yudas says no, until four hours. Mincha, Tanakama says until evening, or sunset, let's call it, and Rabbi Yehuda says no, until Plaga Mincha. Mariv, okay, everybody seems to be agree with that. And Musaf, ooh, I forgot this part, and Rabbi Yehuda says, and this is B, this is Rabbi Yehuda, until seven hours. Good? Everybody with me? Okay. Now, before we go on into the Gemara, which I think we have a few, ooh, we don't have that much time. Okay, I want to give you the following homework. When are we meeting next time, Rabbi? Review the Mishnah in the format of Gemara or whatever you have, right? Until the point where you can pull out a regular Gemara and read it inside. Okay, got that? That's the, that's the goal. Now, the way that you would do that, the simplest way of doing it is simply review this a couple times in here. It, the mission is still pretty simple. The Gemara gets a little more dicey, right? But read it in the in Mishnah, make sure you got it down, and then you're not done until you can read it inside of a regular Vilna edition Gemara without any aids. That's when you're done. When you can do that fluently and be able to explain it in your own words. And like I said, you could theoretically explain it to your kid sister. Right? Then you got it. Good? That's homework. Okay? If you finish all that, which I don't expect that to take too long because I have a feeling that everybody got it pretty well and the mission is not so hard, try your luck at Sugyu 1.2. 
try to understand the Gemara, I will tell you that the Gemara is going to ask an interesting question and going to try to give an interesting answer. And it's going to have uh, implications in Halacha. Try your luck at 1.2, which is just a few lines, and do the exact same thing. Try to work it out, exactly what we just did tonight. And uh, we will see you uh, next week.